Hey guys, we move on to question three now. It says a ball is thrown vertically downwards with an initial speed 2,5 meters per second from point P located above the ground. At the same instant, a second identical ball B is dropped from point Q, which is 20 meters below point P. Again, you always do the same. Read the full question and then let's start. Both balls hit the ground at the same time. Important piece of information, right? This here. The both balls hit the ground at the same time. Very important piece of information. Ignore the effects of friction. Automatically, we now know we're dealing with free fall motion. Remember, free fall motion is when the only force that acts on an object is the force of gravity or the weight. Calculate the time taken by ball B to hit the ground, and it's worth 7 marks. Calculate the velocity with which ball A hits the ground. Calculate the height of point Q above the ground. Sketch an acceleration time graph for ball B for its entire motion. Okay, so we want the time taken by ball B to hit the ground. Well, what we know for ball B is that it is dropped. So initial velocity when you drop an object is zero. What else do we know? Well, we know that the acceleration is going to be 9.8. So because I'm now bringing the acceleration, I need to choose a direction. I think it's easy to say downwards is positive. Okay, guys. Downwards is positive because that's the direction of motion. Okay, the initial direction of motion is downwards, so it's positive. So it becomes negative, the A becomes 9,8 uh, downwards. Okay. Now, nine comma eight one, okay. At, at the same instant, a second identical ball is dropped. Okay, so now we want the time taken. Generally, to use an equation of motion, we need three quantities, and then the fourth one. We want the time. But you'll discover that this is difficult because we've only got two um, quantities. Okay, so basically there's another quantity that is also unknown. Okay, so what can we do? Well, let's look at ball B. Or rather ball A. Ball A we told the initial velocity is 2,5. Right? And we are told that um, we know that the A is going to be 9,8. We're told that the displacement that this ball travels, the displacement traveled by ball A, should be the displacement of ball B plus 20. So ball A is to cover this 20 meters first, and it's going to cover this displacement by A. So the total that A, uh, I mean, the displacement by B. I'm confusing A and B, wow. Okay, so the displacement by B, like that. Oh, so the clue must be the displacement. I don't know the displacement. So notice I've got two unknowns now. The first unknown is the time. The second unknown is the displacement. So, if I've got two unknowns, what can I do? What if I try and make a simultaneous equation? I can do that and then solve both equations simultaneously. Can I make an equation for the displacement of A and the displacement of B? And since they're equal, I can solve that? Yes, I can. Okay, so let's start by designing an equation for A. Delta X of A is going to be what? Let's use the formula VI delta T plus half A delta T squared. 
because it's the formula that has got the displacement, the initial velocity, and the acceleration, and the time that we want. We know that the initial velocity is 2,5, so it's 2,5 delta t, plus half of a, a is 9,8, half of that is 4,9 delta t squared. Okay, so with this delta x of a, I can say 2,5 delta t plus 4,9 delta t squared is equal to the displacement of b. So now let's write what the displacement of b is in terms of vi delta t and a. The displacement of b use the same formula. Since the initial velocity is zero because it's dropped, so this part becomes zero. We're going to remain with half of we know that the a is 9,8, so this becomes 4,9 delta t squared. So this becomes 4,9 delta t squared plus 20. Right? I can see from this equation that the 4,9 delta t squared can be subtracted from both sides. Okay? Subtract that from both sides. I remain with 2,5 delta t equals 20. 2,5 delta t is equal to 20. Now, delta t must be equal to 8 because you divide both sides by 2,5. So the time taken there is 8 seconds. Okay, calculate the velocity with which ball A hits the ground. Now I know the time. I've got initial velocity, so I've got a third quantity. So it's easy now to use the big four, one of the big four, the four equations of motion. Okay, so just continue to rub that out. So I now know initial velocity is 2,5, acceleration 9,8, time 8. Velocity, now it's easy to look for an equation that has all that. And I'll use Vf, it's Vi plus A delta T. 2,5 plus 9,8 times 8. So... 2,5 plus 9,8 times 8, 80,9 meters per second downwards, okay? Oh. Downwards. My pen just pulled the whole page up. Okay, down. Hey, a 80,9. So there's 80,9 meters per second. It says calculate the height of point Q above the ground. The height of point Q above the ground. Again, it should be fairly straightforward because now I know the time it takes this ball to hit the ground. So I now know that vi is 0, a is 9,8, and delta t value is 8. The displacement is what? So the displacement is going to be vi delta t plus half of a delta t squared. I know that the first part is 0. Then it's going to be a half of 9.8 times 8 squared. So, a half of 9.8 times 8 squared, 313,6 meters. So, Q is 
313,6 meters above the ground. Okay. So this is 313,6 meters above the ground. And then 3.4 says sketch an acceleration time graph for ball B for its entire motion. Okay. So there are two ways of looking at it. One, we could have a situation where we say downward is positive. And the other one, we could have a scenario where we say downward is negative. Okay. So there's the time in seconds. And there's the acceleration meters square second. Acceleration meters per square second. There's the time in seconds. So if downward is positive, it means the acceleration is also positive. And it remains at 9,8 for 8 seconds. If downward is negative, the acceleration becomes negative 9,8. Again, for eight seconds. But that is how you could have approached a question like this. So when you're working with equations of motion, generally list the quantities that you get. If you find there are three of them, it means the fourth one you can easily link with an equation of motion. Normally, if you see yourself getting two of those quantities only, and there are probably two objects you might need to use a simultaneous equation. Okay. That's question three.